Aloha and welcome to this module on interactive development environments. I think this is one of the real fundamental skills that you'll acquire in ICS 613 if you haven't already. That's the migration from the use of um, primitive text editors to the use of more fully functioned um, technologies to help you edit code uh, more quickly and efficiently and uh, and definitely with more quality than would be possible with a kind of a dumb editor. So I know that interactive development environments have a larger learning curve and they take a, mo a little bit longer to start up when you bring them up, but the advantages so significantly outweigh those minor disadvantages that I hope by the end of this semester you would never think of using a, uh, a non-IDE for, for anything but the most trivial programming tasks. So an IDE is essentially it's aware that you're programming, it's aware of the language, and it's aware of what constitutes the system. Okay, so the technology itself understands what you know in a sense what it is semantically that this object is that you're trying to manipulate, and can provide lots of features to help you do it. Okay, so um, including you know wizards, diagramming all that kind of stuff. This is a list of the kinds of things that IDDs have. This is in contrast to, you know, primitive, non-intelligent um, non or non-aware technologies like Notepad and TextPad, where it's just a simple string of characters. Okay, so there's a lot of reasons to use an IDE, um, even though they're more complicated to learn and take time to master. The point is, that if you're going to become a professional software engineer and build large-scale systems, you need technological help at the point of typing your code. And that's what an IDE is going to provide. The other thing is that sometimes in interviews, um, you'll be asked, what's the technology that you use to write code? And if you answer that you're using Notepad or whatever, it's going to be a problem. Okay. So, you know, again, just to kind of um, drive the point home, there's some things that are easy to use, but they're very limited in functionality. There's other things that are more complicated to learn to use, but you can get a lot, of, lot farther when you start using them. Okay, so as a specific example, to do compilation in something like Notepad, you're switching out back and forth between, um, you know, a terminal window and the editor window, and there's no connection between the two. In Eclipse, the compilation occurs in background basically as you type code or as you save code and it's um, so seamless that you really don't even notice that you're doing compilation. Okay, so let's look at the kinds of things that IDs have. They support coding, they support testing, they support debugging, and they support refactoring. One of the most important useful features of an IDE is refactoring. Refactoring is essentially the idea that as the program evolves, you're going to start to realize that um, the names of packages, classes, and variables should be different from what they actually are. You're starting to use them in a manner differently than you did before. And that is a key process of evolutionary programming. Okay, is variables start to be used, classes start to be used there in different ways as you change their functionality. So the problem is it's impossible to always name these things correctly initially, okay? Because sometimes you don't, you just can't predict where you're going to be going with these particular objects, okay? As these objects get referenced all over the place in your system, you know, you, if you're not using an IDE, then the overhead involved with trying to change their name to more accurately reflect their current, um, their current usage is too much to bear. You just, you know, you've got, so, you, you, you don't want to do it. Okay, you don't want to take the time to manually edit all of these, um, these references. Okay, refactoring is a hugely important feature of an IDE because what it means is that as you program along and as you extend and change and enhance the functionality of your various objects in your program, you can just right click on, you know, select the, the element, right click on its name, press, or, you know, select refactor and change all of the instances of that particular program construct to a better name. Okay. And um, what's cool about IDEs is they understand the semantics. So if you have that same 
string of characters in a string, it's not going to, ch you know, change those characters to be the new name. It understands the difference between the embedded characters in a string and reference in a, you know, in a, in a variable declaration. Okay, so here's some examples from Eclipse. You can see that um, it's showing you, you know, what the problem is with this particular line of code and providing, in this case, um, some alternatives that you can use to fix it. In this case, that particular class wasn't, it doesn't have an associated import statement, and it shows you the various imports you could make for that. Okay, that's a big issue in Java programming, all those import statements, keeping them organized, making sure that you have just the right number. Eclipse makes that very easy to do. Um, running the program within Eclipse is a nice feature. It speeds up that, you know, edit, compile, execute loop that, you know, we typically go through. Um, and makes it you know that much faster to understand what's going on. Once you can run it within the program, you can use a um, debugger, which such as this one in Eclipse, which enables you to single step through the program, looking to see what the values of variables and other constructs are at various times during execution, and that can be a great way when you don't quite understand what's happening to to um, to diagnose the error and fix it. And then here's this the refactoring um, capability that I talked about a, a couple minutes ago, which just is essential to keeping programs understandable um, and and readable over time as the functionality evolves. So these are all the various kinds of things that, if as I say, if you can do them quickly, you're likely to do them. If they're really time consuming to do it, you tend to blow them off and find something else to do. Okay, so um, what an IDE provides is the is the ability to make these housekeeping functions so simple and easy to do that you'll do them. Okay, so we also will be covering build tools in the class and um, IDEs are different from build tools in that what we want is in a large community of programmers we don't necessarily want to force every programmer to use the same integrated development environment. Okay, Now in this class we are going to force all of you to use the same one and the reasons for that is because what I want to do is help you all over the learning curve so that you can work with each other, share things you've discovered using the ID and that's going to make it it's it easier for you to learn to use it and also um, when you're when we're sharing code and doing things if you we can share the project files associated with Eclipse IDE and make it easier for you to collaborate but you know for example in the Linux operating system they're not going to want to require every single person to use Emacs or you know whatever okay so build tools provide a independent manner to build the system apart from using the IDE. The other thing that's important about build tools is that they can be made part of a tool chain. So you can automatically build the system using a build tool. IDEs, it, you know, you could essentially, I guess, run Eclipse and, you know, audit, have some um, script that presses the build button, but, you know, that's kind of not that elegant. Okay? So in this class, we're going to use Eclipse version 4.2. Um, you know, it's not necessarily the best IDE for Java programming. I'm not going to make that claim, but it is open source, so it's freely available. It's not a bad IDE, um, and, um, it, you know, it's good for us to have a standard for it. Okay, so um, this week what you're going to be doing is writing a very, the, the, the FizzBuzz program using it. Next week we're going to delve into Robocode, which will give you a chance to, to exercise your Eclipse coding skills even more. All right, thanks a lot. See you soon.